the range for letting us come out here, take aim range in Pageland, South Carolina, near Charlotte. Hey gang, I'm here with my buddy Tyler Gray. This is Tactical Trigger Time with Tyler. We have here possibly the only one in the United States on loan from some good friends of ours, an Iranian-made G3. Notice the Iranian markings here on the side. Tyler, do you have a lot of time on the G3? Obviously not as much as an AR, but uh, I, I like shooting all, you know, all the HK variants, so I've, I've shot it a decent amount. Here's my deal on this gun. I want, way back in the day when I was a young buck and I was more of a gun snob than I am now, I, I didn't really think much of the G3. As time has went on, I appreciate the gun and the design and the durability and the longevity of the weapon a lot more. And also, I know the history. When you go back to the STG 45 yep. and even the Sturm Gewehr prior to that, and you kind of know the lineage yep, up came. to this gun, it's actually the G3s are pretty cool guns. And like a lot of them out there, you have a lot of different you know, variants around the yep. world. And the Iranian one would be certainly one of the absolute rarest ones around. And you know what? You brought up a good point prior to in terms of Iranian markings on the side of the lower receiver and back here on the rear sight drum, but SCF on the trigger house. Yep. My call behind that is. Um, when you see that kind of stuff, is those are housings that came from another manufacturer, another HK licensed manufacturer, possibly from Germany, a variety of manufacturing facilities around the world that were licensed by HK. And that's that when I see yeah. that, that's generally what I think. Yeah. Now, when you've shot them, what's been your impression recoil wise? I feel they're really good in semi, um, you know, in full auto. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, the, the, the 762 is a, a beast um, yeah. in full auto and you know, you're dumping a 20 round mag quick. The G3 is kind of the one that has outlasted them all. Yeah. You yeah. see more G3s around the world, whether yeah. it be in Africa or in the Middle East, than any of the, anything else by far. Yeah. So yeah. it's really proven to be a very adaptable and, and durable long gun. When you see any of them, any of the variants, and they taper down and they have this up front, designates a free floating handguard on that particular yeah. HK roller locked model. They still serve to this day to limited degrees. You still see guys using these guns, even in the German military, for designated marksman purposes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, we're fixing to light this thing up for the first time ever, Iranian G3. I've never even handled one before, let alone shoot one. Awesome. So, stay tuned. We're going hot. All right, bro, I'm gonna go hot with it first, if that's okay. Absolutely. Anytime you're loading one of these roller locked HKs, you gotta use as much of the recoil spring as you possibly can. So as a general rule, when you put in a new mag, it's, it's not a bad idea to even lock the bolt to the rear, then put in the mag, whether it's MP5, G3, HK33, whatever, and then maximum recoil spring power to chamber that round because if you get in the habit of trying to short stroke it, it is gonna get you in trouble. Cool? Little semi. Yeah, Iranian G3. Going hot. Not bad, I mean, I was wondering what it was going to be like shooting it because these things, depending on the locking block they have, the recoil can be harsh or actually fairly soft, and this one's not bad. I'm going to try a little auto here. Hmm. Check that round out. Light strike. Uh huh. I will bet you, I'll try one more, but I'll bet you money we got bolt bounce going on. We'll know when we get it on the slow mo. I guarantee you that's the case. Yep, I guarantee you that's it. I'll shoot a few more and then let you have at it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, dude. And you put some more ammo in the mag for you, but overall, dude, it's, it's real soft shooting for a G3. Yeah. It's a good example for you to light up to see what I'm talking about. Yeah, absolutely. Cool.
That's very soft. Oh, yeah, not bad at all. Yeah. For 7.62 NATO? Yeah, very soft. It's real mild. Per usual, it ejects the brass into the next county. Yeah, yeah. I was watching yours. It was flying. We you know because it kind of has a floating ejector. It pivots, so when the bolt carrier is coming to the rear, the front comes up to hit the empty case to kick it out. Bolt carrier goes forward. It kicks down out of the way. So it's it's kind of a floating ejector, or it essentially acts as a fixed ejector, unlike a spring-loaded plunger ejector on an M16 or an M4. So that's one of the reasons why you get the brass that goes. Yeah, and it also shoots it forward, just oh, yeah. big dog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really spitting cool. it out. Light it up a few more times. Cool. Excellent. Shoots Iranian very nice. Heat. Yeah, dude, it's not bad at all. All right, Tyler, we're gonna wrap this thing up here on the Iranian G3, true moon rock. Yeah. Only one that we know of in the United States. What's your impressions after shooting? Um, I mean, as you said earlier, 762 by 51 is, you know, a beefy caliber. For real, for real. It's, it, you know, and, um, you know, some shoot, you know, some fouls shoot super hard, some G3s shoot super hard, and it's kind of different on each one. They're, you know, each one's a little bit different. And that one shot, I thought, great. Very soft. Very soft, yeah. you know. Multiple shots, we were doing two, three, four shots, and it was very controllable, and uh, uh, too bad the full auto didn't work because I would have really liked to have seen how the yeah. recoil was in full auto. As, as is suspected here, it was bolt bounce. We, we checked it out on the high-speed camera, and sure enough, bigger than Stuttgart, you can see that bolt carrier bouncing out. And what ends up happening is that robs that inertia of the hammer coming up, and that's why you got the light primer strikes. My call is that gun was probably stored somewhere overseas in the Middle East with the bolt carrier locked to the rear for years on end. I've Ooh, seen that before. Gotcha. Seen an SVD, a Russian SVD, where you could tell had been stored for a long period of time with the bolt carrier locked to the rear, and that kills the recoil spring over time. My gut is if you put a new recoil spring in that thing, probably would have a different result on full auto. That's the only thing I wish we would have got to see, because I, I think it would have shot for a G3 really soft. Oh yeah, and on auto, me on semi, it was a pussycat. Oh yeah, that was nice, yeah, hey, that was great. Before we close it up, shout out to MagTech. They sent some 7.62 MEN German-made ammo. I've, I've shot some of that stuff overseas in Europe. It is fantastic ammunition. They're the current importer for that stuff. Check it out at your local gun shop. MEN, 9mm, 5.56, 7.62 NATO. Top-notch ammunition. Hope you enjoyed it. True Moon Rock today, Iranian G3, Tyler Gray, LAV, out.